although a little bit crooked. Let's try this. And hey, YouTube and Facebook. Good to see all of you here today. This is Dr. Brooke Goldner from Goodbye Lupus and welcome to my Wellness Wednesday. I come on every week to try to help you learn what it takes to get your health back, to live a better life, to answer your questions. All I can do to help you uh, be better, I'm here to do. As always, this can't count as medical advice because I'm not able to see you or treat you. I'm just here to give the best help I can. For some things, you will need to work with me directly or with your doctor. Please talk to your doctor about making any changes in your diet to make sure that it is something that is safe and okay for you. All right, now that I got all that out of the way, uh, let me move on to some good stuff. So one of the things I was thinking about today before I get to the questions, there's two there's two habits I tend to see in folks who live in a state of high fear and worry about their health and their ability to get healthy. Two habits. One is that they tend to make their fears over what might go wrong really, really big. Like, what if I'm the one person who doesn't get better when I eat better or doesn't get healthier from eating cruciferous vegetables? What if this can't work for me? What if, how much damage did I do by eating that one bite of a donut? Like there's always this like cat cat catastrophizing, this, oh, this great big fear about all the things that could go wrong about failure. Everything that seems hard is also really big. Like, gosh, it's so much time to, to make this, this blender of food or to chop up these veggies or things that, that the struggles and the fears are really, really big. Now, in those same people, I often notice that their celebrations of what's going good are really, really, really small and contained and ignored. So I'll give you an example. I literally five minutes ago got off an appointment with a lovely lady in Canada. I just enjoyed meeting with her who's had rheumatoid arthritis for as long as I've been alive. OK, so she's had rheumatoid arthritis for 46 years and has had it chronically. I mean, she's been in pain for 46 years. And, you know, has the joint deformities and has all the, the things that you would expect from having chronic rheumatoid arthritis. So she said she did start doing my smoothie. She, she's been always looking for a better way. Medicines didn't really help her. She's one of those unlucky ones where the medicines didn't really help her. And some folks get lucky and the medicines at least give you relief and some folks don't. So she, uh, she started listening and watching me about a year ago and slowly adding more smoothly, more healthy foods, finally started taking out animal products. And what she found, she goes, well, you know, there's been some improvement, but it's minimal, which is why I wanted to meet with you. And I said, well, tell me, what is the improvement exactly? And she said, well, um, my dry eyes, she has other problems as well, but my dry eyes are better. Now I get lubrication in my eye. And it used to be on top of hurting every day, so she has a type of pain where it's every day, but then four times a year, it's way worse. So some of you might relate to it where you're never in remission, but then you get flares on top of it. So usually she has three or four flares a year. And every single time in the past, she's had to use a, a short course of steroids to get that flare to go away. But since she's been on my smoothies, she'll notice a flare, but it goes away after a day all by itself. I said, that is not a minimal improvement. <laughs> And that is an enormous improvement. You're telling me in your 70s, you started drinking my smoothies and choosing better food. It's not perfect. And instead of needing steroids four times a year, you might have a flare pain one day that resolves on its own. Said your body is healing itself. It's repairing damage. You're, and her life is stressful. So the stress is creating a flare. And then her body's like, no, smoothie to the rescue. And it comes in and it fixes the damage. That is a significant and exciting improvement. She should be like, just woo, like so excited. But her focus is on her fears and her pain and the struggles that she faces in her life and, and, and even with her diet. But what's good is kind of ignored or minimized. So a lot of what I do in my rapid recovery group daily working with people, uh, we have a whole curriculum of videos that they watch every day to try to what I do is I try to download my brain into their brain. So they have to listen to me every day, you know, to try to download all the positivity and the happiness in there. And, and so what I help them work on is developing a habit where every day you celebrate every day at the end of the day, you celebrate everything good. You celebrate it. There's no such thing as jinxing. If there was, I would be dead. 
right? I celebrate every little thing that's going well all the time. And that's what makes me feel like a winner and lucky. Even when I was sick, I was able to feel that way because I always focused on what I had and I celebrated what was good. So I get people in the habit of celebrating out loud with real excitement, every little tiny change for the better. And if something's going wrong, all right, let's just make a game to deal with it. If there's nothing going wrong, but you're just afraid of something going wrong, well, that's just a feeling. I can feel it, but I don't have to do anything about it. So if you find that what I just said resonated with you, you're like, this is me. This is what she's, I, I'm who she's talking about. And you're not the person I just got off the phone with. Then it's important to, to fix that. I talk a lot about this, by the way, in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease. So for people who couldn't do my group or, or can't work with me, I try to put things into books so that you can do it on your own. And so in my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, I have a lot of chapters about how to do this mental work to change your mindset so that not only can you heal, but you can enjoy the process and you can notice it happening and celebrate it happening uh, in a real and significant and powerful way. So I hope that helped you all today. Let us get down to the questions. All right, let's see here. Get into the Instagram. All right, let's see what we've got going on with Instagram. Besides a lot of hellos. All right, 98 Pastor Racer, can the protocol heal SIBO and low stomach acid? Um, yes, you know, it's interesting. I don't like to talk about the diagnosis so much when it comes to these kind of stomach issues, because a lot of times the names that you're given for the stomach problem is just a name to kind of pacify you like, oh, you have gas and SIBO, right? But it doesn't really give you much to work with there, right? Oh, you're not digesting well, maybe st low stomach acid, or maybe they did test it. I, when I've worked with people who've had these issues and they got better, but we never went back to test. Did the bacteria get lower in the bowel? Um, did the stomach acid come up? We didn't test that. So I can't say for sure that it fixed that. All I know is it fixed the person. They no longer had the same gastrointestinal issues. And a lot of folks with GI issues are told advice that makes their GI issues worse, even by their GI doctor, which is very frustrating. Uh, I know not just for me, but for the people dealing with it, that, you know, they'll put them on low fiber diets, those low FODMAT diets, just eat white stuff, you know, and yes, acutely that can feel better, but then your gut gets weaker and weaker. And then you lose the ability to eat the foods you need to like the high fiber foods. So we have to retrain the gut to be able to eat the foods that people actually need for their health. All right, let's go over to YouTube. All right, let's see. So Noelia uh, Sancho wants to know, when stepping down, which are the healthiest non-veg foods apart from tofu, nuts, and quinoa? What about rye, corn, potatoes, oatmeal, buckwheat, beans, chickpea, and pumpkin seeds? I'll say yes. So the hypernourishment is something that you want to always do. Okay, so let's just talk about these in pieces. So hypernourishment is something you always want to do. Once you get the antidote of how to nourish yourself in such a way that your body always has the ingredients it needs to provide you with cellular repair, fight against infections, keep the aging of your organs to a minimum. You don't give that up, right? And sometimes I see people do that where they'll, they'll say, oh, well, I got better, so I just stopped my smoothies. I'm like, why? I've been, I've been healthy almost 18 years now, and I still drink them every day. Why? Because it keeps me like this, happy, healthy, nourished. I don't get sick. I have very young and healthy organs. It is the antidote. People often want, what is the antidote, the secret to the fountain of youth? I found it. So I will never stop it. And look here, I'm doing really good on my water today. I had a tough boot camp this morning, so I, I drank most of it. But um, I'm always going to do that because it keeps me in optimal condition. I went from someone who was chronically dying and in pain to now chronically above average in health. I don't want to get, I don't lose that. I want to keep that, right? So one, that's something you always want to do. You hyper nourish and because it gives your body what it needs to be healthy, right? Now, goodbye autoimmune disease protocol, goodbye lupus. Now we're, we're getting into more strict emergency protocol, right? So goodbye autoimmune disease protocol means you're doing everything you can to have your entire lifestyle and your diet be anti-inflammatory to heal from a serious issue as quickly as possible, right? So you're just eating the foods that help you heal. You are doing your self-care. You're getting enough sleep. You're avoiding stress. You're doing whatever it takes to get your body into a healing mode. But that's an emergency protocol. It's not, you could eat that way forever. It's optimal, but most people never would, right? So, so we separate that out. 
And so you do that until your symptoms are gone. And then you do what I call step down. And so that's what Noelia is asking me about is step down. So step down is when you start adding back other foods so that you can have a more diverse diet. Um, and so some people do decide to stay raw and just add back nuts and seeds and fruits, uh, you know, unlimited fruits, all those things. Uh, and most folks will add all these other things. These are all unprocessed plant foods. So I'm fine with all everything you listed. Um, and pumpkin seeds, they're super high in omega-6, but once you're already healthy, if you're keeping up hypernourishment, adding some other seeds here and there will not hurt you. Uh, it'll be part of maintaining that balance. Okay. So I hope that helps. Okay. Let's see here. All right. Let's go down to Facebook. All right. Tomas wants to know, can Crohn's disease, inflammatory bowel disease, and celiac disease, autoimmune disorder be cured using the six-week full goodbye lupus protocol? Okay, before I can answer it, I have to clarify what you're asking me. So um, there is no six-week protocol. I really need all of you to hear me on this. There is no six-week protocol, all right? I have a six-week rapid recovery group where people work with me every day for six weeks, but there's no six-week protocol. If you decide to do the protocol, you do it until you get the results you want. For some people, that's going to be, I've had people get better in a week to two weeks, and sometimes it'll be six weeks or five weeks, and sometimes it'll be four weeks, and sometimes it'll be eight weeks. So there's no six-week protocol, okay? Um, I have seen so many people who canceled, they stopped their results because they decided to do it for six weeks. I saw a doctor not that long ago. She did this for six weeks and told me she was 85 to 90% recovered. And then at six weeks, she just stopped doing all the raw foods and went back to cooked foods. And then she got all her symptoms back. And I said, where, even as a physician, what treatment would you give until someone was 85 to 90% better and then stop it? She was like, you wouldn't. Yeah. So, you know, just don't set a timer. But have we had people completely reverse Crohn's disease and have normal blood markers and, um, and, and stool markers? Uh, yes, usually within four to five weeks in rapid recovery. Um, and uh, celiac disease, we've had two people with celiac disease do the goodbye lupus protocol. And uh, one was a doctor in Canada and one was a 20, early 20s uh, young lady uh, here in the States. And both of them were able to fully reverse the celiac and be confirmed able to tolerate grains again. Be careful with that one. You don't want to just add grains in and test it because you, you could get sick. But yes, we have had great results with reversing both of those illnesses where people no longer had detectable disease. So yes. Okay. Sorry. Sometimes I have to give a, a long intro to answering the question to make sure people don't get confused about what they need to do. Okay. Uh, let's see. Steven, thanks for asking. Things are well with me and mine. Thank you. All right, let's see. Let's do one more from, see if we can get to my Facebook. Um, and then Kate wants to know, what's your opinion about cashew versus almond milk? No health issues. In order for me to have an opinion on something, I need to have tested it. I don't like to make things up. I find it to be disrespectful for people. And it's also a way that you can be wrong a lot more. So a lot of the times when people get bad advice about things is because somebody's just like, I think this, but they never tested it. So I don't BS people. Um, I have not tested to see how cashew milk works for people compared to almond milk. When I first started my programs, the only uh, non-dairy milks available at the time this was before it was cool to be dairy free, right? The only non-dairy alternatives available were soy milk and, uns and almond milk. Those were the only two available. So we built the program using unsweetened almond milk. Some people got inflammation from soy milk, so we didn't use it. So I've never like redone it to see, can people get the same results using cashew milk, macadamia milk, all these other ones. When something works, it works. So if you have no diseases and you like cashew milk, there's mo and you're getting your hyper nourishment in and your omega threes, you'd probably be fine. But when people are trying to do good by autoimmune disease protocol, I don't recommend using other ones just because it's untested. It's up to you if you want to be the one that tests it. But then I, I just don't like variables, especially when I'm working with people like in rapid recovery, I either have 28 or 42 days with someone. I'm not going to do tests. We're going to do what works. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's see here. All right, let's go back into Instagram. Okay, Leticia wants to know, um, will the hypernourishment protocol reverse gallstones and pancreatitis? It can help with things like, um, we've seen it help with hepatitis, pancreatitis. Here's the thing, um, any kind of itis, ITIS is just a, a Latin uh, 
word or word part that means inflammation. So whenever you add itis to the end of any organ, you're saying inflammation of the pancreas, pancreatitis, colitis, inflammation of the colon, right? So that, yes, whether or not it will get rid of gallstones, mm, I don't know. Again, we haven't tested that. We have seen that some folks who have gallbladder pain say their pain goes away when they eat this way. And most likely it's because um, they were eating a lot of saturated fats, meat, dairy, other things. And every time you're, you're trying to digest fat, your gallbladder is going to squeeze, right, to release what it needs to to help your body digest the fat. So if you're eating a lot of heavy fats and it's squeezing all the time and you've got rocks inside of it, it hurts every time you squeeze it. So if this is a big improvement for you and you're feeling better, that's great. I have had occasionally people who had a lot of um, gallstones where even having the tiniest bit of flax seeds or flax oil is still squeezed. So, um, and they still had pain. So that one, it seems to be more of an individual basis. Maybe with time that would get better, but I don't know that it actually would get rid of the stone. I think it's more the inflammation around it and how active you are in, you know, squeezing that gallbladder down. So it's best I could do for you on that. Uh, I dog tips on expelling a kidney stone, uh, pain relievers. Uh, yeah, there's no, um, kidney stones are either going to be, um, they're going to come out naturally through your urethra, or if they're too big, a doctor will remove them. Staying super hydrated would be a good idea, but they are painful and there's, uh, they either are passed or removed. I hope, I hope you're not dealing with one, but yeah, those can be very painful. The majority of people who have kidney stones um, are either dehydrated or they eat a lot of animal products. So if that's you and, and not enough plant foods, plant foods have been shown to alkal alkalinize, I can say it, <laughs> alkalinize the urine. I don't know why my tongue's asleep right now. Uh, they've been known to alkalinize your urine, which can then prevent stones or help them break down. But if you have a very acidic diet because you're eating processed foods, animal products, and you're also dehydrated, that is setting the stage for stones. Unlike a lot of the bad info out there right now where people are saying vegetables cause them, it's just not the, not the case. They even did a study where they, they were trying to test whether or not it's like oxalates from vegetables causing them. And so with people with current stones, they had people stop eating vegetables and their stones got worse. Uh, so then they added them back because, again, you need it for the alkaline uh, ability there. All right, let's see here. Lemon... Time. Oh, that's clever. It's a clever YouTube name. Uh, my friend has a uterine fibroid tumor the size of a four and a half month pregnancy. Oh my gosh. Can hypernourishing potentially get rid of it? Thank you. Um, first of all, that's, that's a big tumor. Uh, so we, we have had people who have done my program for either, um, you know, they wanted to do it for arthritis or other problems. And they also had fibroids and other issues. And I've had some people just with fibroids who found that they reduced and, uh, and their pains went away. Um, we have seen tumors shrink, not on just hypernourishment though. We're talking full goodbye autoimmune protocol. I don't know whether it's going to eliminate this giant tumor. I don't know is my answer. I don't know. It can only potentially help but I don't know that it will eliminate it. We don't know until we try, but please tell me if she decides to give it a go. And um, usually when someone finds a big tumor, the doctors are pretty eager to take it out. And um, so, all right, let's see. Go down to Facebook. Let's see. Uh, Babu Parhar. Hey, Dr. G, what do you think about fasting or fast to encourage apoptosis of bad cells? I don't really have a lot to give you on this because I don't use fasting in my clients. Hypernourishment is the opposite of fasting, right? We're overdosing people in nutrition to stimulate cellular repair. And what I found is it is absolutely phenomenal and it works great. I don't use fasting. A lot of folks uh, that have come to me referred to me by places where they do water fast, for example. And what they find is for a lot of folks while they're fasting, they feel great. And then they start adding food back and their issues come back. So if you're going to need to hypernourish anyway, why not jump into it without having to starve? Although if you've been fasting 
smoothies and salads are luxurious <laughs> versus coming from burgers to smoothies and salads. So I don't think there's, you know, for most people, uh, it's something that's okay to do. Uh, I have had uh, another reason why I don't really like fasting, especially for long periods of time, is I did have a client once who did it after recovering with me. He he had uh, he had reversed his lupus and kidney failure and was off his medicines and was doing really well. And then he found out about like this water fasting place and it was supposed to be medically supervised. And he went there and he collapsed and ended up in the hospital with bone marrow failure and a coma. Now, I have gone to my friends who actually oversee water fasts and asked them what happened and they don't know. They said maybe they weren't monitoring his labs and things like they should have. Maybe because he'd already been on my program, he had low body fat and so he wasn't able to live off the fat and instead he became starving. I, nobody can tell me, but for me, that freaked me out and, uh, and it's not something I mess with. Now, again, this was prolonged. This was like for three weeks. People who fast for a few days aren't going to have something like this. So that made me pretty skittish around the whole idea of it, especially if I know that overdosing in nutrition will help people recover and get rid of damage and problems. So, you know, you'd want to talk to someone who does fasting with people to say, what are the risks and, and how well does it work? But for me, um, I shy away because I had that experience with the client and because it's not necessary. So, Oh, I'm going to show up this one. So Christina wrote, I have managed to stop an MS relapse with the goodbye lupus protocol. Thank you so much. It worked like magic in 10 days. I got back to normal without steroids or anything. Just good, but the goodbye lupus protocol. So that is freaking awesome. And I love when all of you uh, share results like that on these meetings, because it's really important for people to see that these things are real. I mean, that's the reason I spend this kind of time uh, giving to the public and trying to help the public is because I know my biggest job is actually just convincing people to do it. Once you do it, then the results happen and it's worth it. Um, but for some reason, uh, it's just hard to convince people to do it and to stick with it long enough. So that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here with you right now. All right, let's see over here. Um, let's see. Um, oh, look, there's another one right after it. <laughs> Somebody else. Uh, I've lost weight and lots of inflammation, something I've never been able to do with anything I've ever tried. My depression isn't as bad as, as uh, since I've been following you. Thank you so much. Cool. Yeah, I hope you share all these good news and inspire all of your, uh, your friends along here watching and needing some help and encouragement. That's so good. All right, let's see. Let me get to the question part. Shauna, um, I'm doing goodbye lupus protocol for psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis. Um, I'm sorry to keep asking, but could you address nighttime leg cramps? Anytime I reach 96 ounces of water, I get them. My electrolyte panel and CBC are normal. It's not the meds. I was already salting my foods plus some fermented food, sea vegetables. I tried adding more and it gave me swollen feet and ankles. I tried a few brands of electrolytes and I've taken magnesium. Well, usually if it is increasing water that causes leg cramps, it's usually to do with sodium. But if you absolutely cannot increase the water to 96 ounces, then find where you can. Maybe you can do 90. I don't know. So if you keep struggling, you might have to just work with me and we can figure out what the heck's going on. But normally, if it's just the water causing it, it's a sodium issue. Because if you're hypernourishing, you're getting calcium, you're getting potassium, you're getting all these other things that are necessary. You're taking a magnesium supplement. So the other thing it usually would be would be something to do with sodium. So um, you could always try if you take nighttime leg cramps, maybe even taking some salt at night, but if it makes your legs swell, then I wouldn't do that. I would just use the water intake that you can tolerate. Not everyone can tolerate the full amount of water. And if not, you do the best you can. All right, Instagram, hi, Nivia, let's see. Hi, Mia Lynn, 2016, all right. Uh, Leberachi wants to know, can you add ginger to your smoothie? Yes, I'll do another one, because that was short. <laughs> see what else Instagram's looking. And Mark, Mark Hurd. <laughs> yes, this helps uh, people with leaky gut. Um, all right. And dynamite is purple cabbage as healing powerful as killer spinach. Yeah, all the cruciferous are really good. And Montiota, I'm glad. Montita, it's so hard to say these names. I'm sorry. Um, all right. So let's see. Caribbean Love 55. How do you get rid of chronic hives and extreme itchy skin? 
Well, this sounds like allergic stuff, right? So there are some people who get chronic hives from inflammation and I've definitely seen that. I have a video, gosh, it's an old one now from someone who was pregnant with lupus and one of her biggest issues was hives everywhere and medicines didn't work. And within a week of doing rapid recovery with me, those hives went away. So sometimes it's inflammation. Um, if sometimes it's allergic and sometimes it's anxiety. I used to help. I used to do therapy with someone with an anxiety disorder back in my residency who would get hives all across her chest every time she panicked. So, uh, but usually uh, that, you know, it's one of those three. So look into what it could be, make sure you're not allergic to something, um, make sure it's not related to anything else. And if it's inflammatory, then you would do the same protocol. So dry skin, or itchy skin. Itchy skin can also be, it can be from hives, from the rash, and it could be from uh, dryness. So make sure that you're using something like shea butter to keep yourself nice and lubricated, unless you're allergic to it for your skin. Um, and uh, and make sure that you are fully hydrated, right? You're drinking your water. And if it's inflammatory, try something like Goodbye Lupus Protocol or Goodbye Autoimmune and see if you can start getting some results there if it's inflammatory. All right. Let's go on the YouTube All right. So Creative Heart wants to know if you have adrenal fatigue, how often should you eat? I heard every one to two hours. Isn't that bad for digestion and blood sugar? I'm not giving the body a break. I don't change the eating cadence for adrenal fatigue. So my goodbye lupus protocol or really the goodbye autoimmune protocol for adrenal fatigue is very, very good. It's effective. Um, exercise actually helps even though people feel tired. Uh, when you just move as much as you can each day and start building on that, it actually helps. Um, and food spacing, if you have digestive issues or you're hungry, um, every two hours is a great way to go. It actually allows your gut to fully empty between meals. Um, so when I first was doing this, I was eating every two hours. Now it's kind of have I work all day on it while I'm while I'm working. But when I first was eating these super high amounts, I found every two hours was the perfect cadence for for meals. Um, one hour is not enough time for the gut to empty, but two hours is. Oh, I'm glad Cheryl Cunningham. I'm glad these videos keep you motivated. All right, Tanya on YouTube wants to know. Does your protocol work with vitiligo? I've lupus and booked a private session with you, but would like to get in sooner than November. Is that possible? So two questions. So yes, I've had results with vitiligo. I had a nine-year-old that I worked with. She did rapid recovery with me, which I don't usually do with children. She was a very special nine-year-old that I interviewed and was ready for it. She wanted to do it for lupus, but she also had vitiligo. And she had repigmenting at the end of four weeks around her lips and her forehead. So that was exciting. So it appears if you get it early enough, that you could get repigmenting. I've also gotten messages from people who told me that they had that. Um, probably newer lesions over older lesions would be my guess, but we haven't. I haven't had someone ever do um, do rapid recovery with me with long-term vitiligo to see what happens. That'd be interesting. In terms of seeing me before November, I'm sorry that I know I'm very booked up. The other option you can do, so if you go to goodbyelupus.com and you click on work with Dr. Jean, one of the options is a, is a private appointment. Those are 75 minute appointments. So I can get to know you and give you a personalized plan. And then I give you my number and everything. You have a problem, whatever you let me know. But uh, I know those are booked out till November or December right now. If you got November, there might've been someone who moved up or, or canceled. Um, if you want to get within eight weeks, there is a rush appointment option. So you basically just add a rush add on to your cart and then you message me and then I will find time to add to my appointment. Maybe we meet before I start for the day or after for the day um, so I can get you in within eight weeks. And that's usually the best I can do. So, all right, let's see. Some different questions today. All right, let's see. Okay. So I'm trying to find something new here. Uh, Thank you for all the kind words. I'm reading them as I go, trying to find uh, the questions. I appreciate all of you who are saying nice things to me or giving me updates. Um, let me see. Okay. All right. 
looks like uh, Christina needs some help here. Um, Hello, Dr. Gilner. It's the second time I'm starting your protocol. First time it only lasted three weeks. Uh, since a week after I quit meat, I started experiencing dizziness and nausea. Second time, same thing happened and I have no idea how to get through it. I've been on a gluten-free and dairy-free diet before starting the protocol. So I'm not sure why I can't tolerate a meatless diet. Two of my two attempts, I did have plasmapheresis. And since then I started having severe and then it just ends. I can't see. So one is be careful what conclusions you're drawing. So if at the same time you stopped me and started my protocol, uh, your your symptoms might have nothing to do with the fact that you're not eating meat. I mean, there's nothing that meat gives you that you're suddenly deficient of besides inflammation and cholesterol, high cholesterol and you know stuff like that. So sometimes people will kind of put things together and assume they're connected when they're really not. I actually just got a message from someone who had thought that their food was causing a problem and I said, it doesn't seem likely to me that your food is causing this problem at all. Look and see what else is going on. And then she realized she had started, I forget, it was either a medicine or supplement around the same time, got rid of that symptom went away. So people always want to blame the food when sometimes it's not really what you think it is. So you can 100% tolerate meatless, your body would be happier for it. But sometimes when people first get started with, uh, with especially if you're trying to do really strict, like goodbye, uh, goodbye autoimmune protocol, sometimes you can feel um nauseous dizzy you know and some of that can be detox some of that can be if you were getting all of your sodium intake from the animal products in your in your life and then you switched over to hyper nourishment with all fresh raw foods tons of water and you didn't add salt in some way most likely then you're getting dizzy because you're just sodium deficient and that will make anybody really woozy and dizzy that's my first guess not knowing everything else you're eating everything else you're doing is that's my first guess is maybe it's just that um, you didn't replace the sodium because if you're doing mostly smoothies, you'd have to like find a way to shoehorn it in. So um, if you're still having issues and that didn't solve it, then that is the time to work with me. Listen, I try to give all the information I can to the public so that you don't need to, right? This is my time to see all of you, right? And sometimes there'll be a problem that I just can't figure out over typing to me in a Q and A. And so it might be worth it to work with me directly so I can help you get it right. So then you can move on and get better. So sorry, I can't give you more there. I just don't know further than that. Let's see. Hopefully that was the answer though. And Tariq wants to know what supplements should I take during goodbye autoimmune protocol? So far I got iodine D3, B12. Yep. That's pretty much it. Maybe a good probiotic uh, can help you with, digesting all this new and exciting fiber that you're <laughs> introducing to your body. Okay, let's see what Instagram wants to know. Natasha wants to know, what's better for RA, chia or flax? Whichever you like better or what's on sale. All right. Uh, eight Young, Mexico. Uh, I have CKD. I've been on dialysis. I want to reverse it. Is it possible? Maybe. So I don't have enough detail for you, um, but... I have helped people reverse kidney disease and get off of dialysis and even off of the transplant list. I have a published uh, case for that, um, but I don't know what your situation is. So what I can say is that the right type of diet, nourishment and avoiding animal products will help preserve kidney function. And if we do it quickly enough, can reverse damage. Um, I have people that are in rapid recovery with me now who have had inc like amazing gains so I, I think I told you last week, but you might not have been here. Two people who just started my group. They're just in day four. They're still anxious and trying to figure it all out, right? So, um, but they, uh, two of them saw me a month before the group started with kidney failure. And both of them in the four weeks before the group started went up seven points on their GFR and had their creatinine come down. Both of them just happened to get seven points, right? Because they started uh, in, in the, like around 20. But the point is that in four weeks, they got that much. It's almost two. Usually it average it's, it's about, you know, one to two points a week that people regain if you can. So I don't know how much damage you have. I don't know how much of it is inflammation that can get better and get you back points. I don't know how much of it is scar tissue. So, and the other part of it is once you're in that level of failure, that's when you do want to work with me because you might not be able to tolerate full hypernourishment. My guess is you can't. Most people on, on dialysis can't do hypernourishment. We have to do nourishment. <laughs> not hyper. We have to do nourishment and use low potassium choices. We have to figure out the amount of water you can tolerate. And so it can take a little bit of, of trying things until I can get you at the dosage that you can best tolerate. But it is the best thing you can do. At minimum, make sure you're not on any animal products. And if you are eating cooked foods, that it's plant-based cooked foods, 
um, avoid oils and you know uh, eat low potassium raw foods as much as possible. All right, while I'm on Instagram, let me see. Leo, can you make sure that my Instagram isn't frozen? Somebody else is frozen, but I want to make sure it's their internet and not mine. So Leo will tell us. <laughs> let me see. In the meantime, let me go back to YouTube just in case. So let's find out. Okay. It's, it's live on Instagram? Okay, good. All right. So hopefully, whoever uh, I hope that uh, Melinda... 2016 is able to get that fixed up. All right, let's see. Um, let me see. All shy. My husband gets stomach grumblings and loose, uncomfortable stools shortly after having a small portion of smoothie. What can we try for him? You might want to just try smaller portions. I don't know how much he's having. Um, you might want to switch out the omega-3 source. Um, some of it is normal, though. When you're not used to these and, and, and you first start putting this into your body, sometimes your bowels are not ready for it. I remember the first time I gave my husband a smoothie, I gave him a big one and he was on his way to, to go train and he had to sit in LA traffic for an hour. I think it was orange County traffic actually at the time. And, uh, he called me like 90 minutes later and he's like, what was in that? And I said, Oh, you know, vegetables and all this stuff. And he said halfway to his destination, he started having so much pain. He was screaming. And then when he got there, he said it was like a can of snakes. <laughs> So we, we jokingly call that now that like, don't leave the house like 20 to 30 minutes until 20 to 30 minutes after you have a smoothie, if you're not used to it, because the can of snakes might happen. And it's generally a good thing that you're going to relieve yourself. Usually the gut does adjust, but if he's really struggling, one, you could do salads instead. Two, you can do smaller doses throughout the day. Three, you could try something like L-glutamine, which can bind it up. So, but some of it is normal. And as long as it's not all day long, can't leave the bathroom, but just like have the smoothie, go to the bathroom, and then you're good, then that's usually okay. My husband did a, he, he, he used to have a very popular podcast where he used to talk about all sorts of personal things like gas and poop. So don't feel bad for him. I'm not outing him on <laughs> something he wouldn't talk about. All right, let me see here. Um, crazy farm girl, I'm sorry to bother you again. I can't get past the loss of my son. I'm half doing healthy. I received his death certificate today and sadness overwhelms my soul. Listen, that's not something you just get over, you know, um, it's a horrible thing to live through and one that I can't even let myself imagine what it's like. What you need to do is lean into people right now. So this is a very big day getting the death certificate. My suggestion is that you go and be with people today, um, either family or friends, or if the closest thing to you is like a local church or synagogue or something, be with people, let people hold you. When when this kind of pain and loss happens, we need to let people hold us. This isn't the kind of thing that we're really wired for as people losing a child. Um, and when it's not something that we should face alone. So please, um, please lean on people. I'm glad that you're here, um, but I can't hold you. I'm holding you in my heart, but go in and be with people who can hold you and be with you. Maybe you can get extra support too, even on taking care of yourself. Maybe there's people let people know that you're struggling and let them help you. It's such an important thing to do. And I'm sorry again about what you're going through. Um, uh, HD custom fiberglass. Can lupus protocol help with enlarged prostate? Yes. Uh, actually, um, I've worked with quite a number of gentlemen whose, um, whose blood levels went down really quickly um, from having uh, BPH as well as uh, cancer. Um, in, in rapid recovery. So yes, absolutely. It can help. Let's see. Um, and Sharon says for the first time in 20 years, I can see my feet without belly fat in the way I'm wearing clothes and shoes. I've not been able to wear in years. Good for you. And maybe even get some new clothes, show off, show off that body. All right. Let's see here. All right. David wants to know, because of poor sleep, Hashimoto's, for years I wake up with headaches and I normally take extra strength, et cetera, in the morning. Will this ruin gut health and slow down the AIP progress? So stop calling it AIP. That's not, I don't do AIP. That's a paleo program. It's uh, the, <laughs> the goodbye autoimmune disease program uh, protocol. So, um, so Excedrin can really cause stomach ulcers. Got to be careful with that. Um, it won't stop you from being nourished, though. Our program works even when people take meds. Here's the thing, though. 
Um, if you take, if you take pain medicine every single day, like Excedrin, then if you don't take it, you will get a rebound headache. So one of the side effects of stopping daily use of something like Excedrin or ibuprofen is rebound pain. So it might be that you don't actually have a daily headache that's being caused by the original reason, but it might be that you now have a daily headache that's you having Excedrin withdrawal. Um, so sometimes when people have daily headaches like that, what works best is stopping the medicine or switching to something that doesn't work in the same way. But to answer your actual question, no, it won't stop the program from working in terms of nutrition. And walking the word with AB wants to know if this helps MS. Well, you just saw somebody who, who said it did, right? And absolutely does. I mean, we've helped people not just reverse symptoms, but reverse lesions off of their MRI. So um, yes, definitely. Let me see here. Let's just go down and find some Facebook people. Okay. Uh, Dijan says, I have diagnosed lupus-like syndrome and I have prescribed previous day Cipro for appendix inflammation and I used just one 500 milligram tablet today. My heel swelled. Is it possible that antibiotic side effect, what can I do? Uh, it's possible, but you need to call the doctor who prescribed it and ask them if it's, if it's a side effect and what you should do. If you were taking a medicine and you have a potential side effect, don't Google call the doctor who prescribed it, ask to talk to the nurse in the office, tell them that you're having this happen and let them help and assist you. Okay. That's super important. Okay. All right. Terry's, I don't know what Zinzino is. It says, what do you think about mega three and oil like Zinzino? I just know flax oil works. So that's what I would recommend. Um, let's see. Jen wants to know any thoughts on the Patterson program and their inclusion of grains. Oh, I've, I've taught, uh, Patterson's groups. He's had me come in to teach before. Um, grains, some people do okay with them and some people don't, but they're not part of hypernourishment. So hypernourishment with grains for some people is plenty and they get the results because they're not having any animal products and they're getting the nutrition they need. And for other folks, uh, they need to take that out to get the full result. So that's just something you can, you can try out and see. Let's see what else is going on with Instagram. Muggle mom. I love people's names on online. They entertain me. I'm easily entertained, but they entertain me. Um, all right. I love hypernourishment. My hubby just started the smoothies. He's refusing to drink the extra water. Is there any issue with having a smoothie with a half cup of chia and flax and only a few cups of water? Listen, the more nutrition and hydration you get, the better the results will be. So... Um, it's kind of an interesting situation here because it sounds like your husband is kind of one of your kids. Like he's refusing to do this or that, like you're trying to feed him and he's not, I would have a conversation with him about like, Hey, what do you want to do? And do you want to fully try this and get better? Because if he does, then it's just a game plan. It might be that it's too much at once, too much liquid at once. And you can just split things up or maybe he can eat the food and then drink the water and that would work. So, but that really depends on how motivated he is to solve this versus like, I'll drink the smoothie and leave me alone kind of situation. And if that's the situation, then you just do that. You take your wins when you can get them. And maybe as his stomach adjusts to the smoothies, maybe he'll want more water, but you know, um, but let me see. And what was there? Yeah. So, but Hey, there's still benefit to what he's doing. And the more he does, the more benefit there will be. But uh, but I'm glad that you at least started and I'm glad that you like them and that he's at least doing something. You know, it's a it's a start. All right. All right. And Meland wants to know, is Lyme reversible? I was just diagnosed with stage three. That's a complicated one. Chronic Lyme, uh, I've worked with a lot of people who haven't done really well in my program, but usually they're also doing either herbs or medicines or other things, um, which they didn't get a full benefit from. So I think the combination of whatever it is that your uh, doctor wants to do with you, combined with having the nourishment your body needs to fully fight back and recover as much as possible, but it definitely is a benefit. All right, let's see. And Hilkazia on a high raw lifestyle, recently digesting issues when eating greens like kale, spinach. What could this be? Bloating and slow digestion problems. 
I'd be looking at what happened. So if you are used to eating this way and then suddenly you're having problems, again, a lot of times people blame the food. They go, oh, I've always eaten this way, but suddenly I'm having a problem. Is it the spinach? And I'm like, no, it's something else because you obviously could do it the whole time. So maybe something happened. Did you get an infection? Has there been stress? Stress can cause gut issues. And in the meantime, just eat the high nutrient vegetables that your body will digest, you know, and, and go from there. Okay, let's see what's the time. We're still doing good. Let's see. Um, just want to, don't want to repeat questions here. Um, Sylvia says, hi, Dr. Brooke, can we, can we have next to smoothies vegetable broth for a warm drink? It depends on your goal. So if you're doing hyper nourishment, that's fine. If you're trying to do a more extreme protocol, like my goodbye autoimmune disease protocol, then no, have some warm tea instead or some hot water with lemon or something like that. Okay. Let's see here. Scrolling. Um, all right. Uh, Linda wants to know how much salt, uh, no, I yes, it's not one tablespoon. It's one teaspoon of salt a day, <laughs> but I don't really put a max on salt because I haven't seen a problem for most people, especially with the high levels of water intake, unless you have an issue like your leg swell or something. Um, okay. All right, let's see here. Um, Nick wants to know, diagnosed with Bichette's, can this be managed with a good autoimmune disease protocol? Yes. I had someone with Bichette's do my rapid recovery group, but she had phenomenal results. She's in full remission. Okay. Let's see here. All right. David on Facebook wants to know, can hypernourishment rebuild the cartilage in the hip? I've been having a lot of pain walking. I was told my right hip cartilage is gone. Uh, I don't know that it will rebuild cartilage that I have not seen, but I have seen people who had um, hip pain and they were told there was nothing you could do, but get a hip replacement. And then being in rapid recovery with me, their pain went away, but they didn't, as far as I know, grow cartilage back, but it was just that the inflammation around the hip was what was causing the pain and not just the issue that they could see on the MRI. So I don't expect people to regrow missing joint pads and cartilage and things like that. But really what we're doing is bringing down inflammation and we're optimizing cellular repair. And that often makes more difference than people ever could imagine. All right. Don is asking for a friend whose husband has gotten too small trying to be on the plan. What should she do? She should make an appointment with me because he shouldn't be losing more weight than would be healthy for him. Um, so if there's something going on where he is, then just have them make an appointment with me so I can meet him and help him get on plan and get healthy. What, what my advice would be would really depend on what's going on, right? Like if he is symptom free and doing well, there's no problem with just adding back other things and enjoying your health. And you can, you know, do some bodybuilding and enjoy your life. Right. Um, if you're trying to get healthy and you're trying to get results, but he can't slow down weight loss and he's doing something wrong. He's not eating enough or there's something, you know, you don't just continuously lose weight forever. And that's like, uh, it's just not a real thing. So just tell them to make an appointment with me so I can actually evaluate and give them advice. If it's not, unless he's already symptom free, in which case, you know, there's no reason for him not to be able to add other things. All right. Um, let me see here. All right. Uh, Pamela, is omega-3 by Nordic Naturals okay? I would really use flax or chia seeds. When it comes to supplements for omega-3s, it's really important to understand. Omega-3s will oxidize, basically break down and no longer be functional when they're exposed to heat or air. So when you put omega-3 fatty acids and you put them into a capsule, you put them into a container, they are now exposed and they are exposed to air. They're going to oxidize. Now you put that onto a truck that's going to get delivered somewhere. And that truck is out there almost anywhere right now because it's hot everywhere, right? And it's heated up, it's not a refrigerated truck, it's dead. So 
ben there, there's not a lot of benefits to taking the supplements over actually using the flax and chia seeds or cold pressed flax oil where you open it up you can smell it's fresh you put it right into your refrigerator right something like that but um for the other ones uh, i don't really recommend them they they aren't very beneficial i mean you can take them if you want um but they might not be giving you what you thought all right let me see um all right jennifer wants to know will rapid recovery reverse ischemic stroke lesions and blood clots so in terms of stroke uh an acute one that just happened yes i've talked before in the q a about someone who had a stroke while working with me that he was on day three of rapid recovery and then he went to the hospital to get a uh, an exam a procedure done and that procedure dislodged a clot and caused a stroke right there and he got home from the hospital after a few days and immediately went back to rapid recovery and his neurologist said that you know in two weeks his recovery looked like he'd been healing for months, six months. So we know that he was getting better as quickly as possible. Now, will it reverse all of the damage? My guess would be no, because there was some, some tissue that died. But because he was able to get on it quickly, he had some, some recovery that was really phenomenal. I was very excited for him. If it's an old stroke where that tissue is long dead, I don't expect to see an improvement in that. Um, blood clots, it, it depends on the reason. If you have active blood clots, then you do want to take blood thinners because the last thing you need is to have a stroke or pulmonary embolism, right? So, <clears throat> but if those clots are caused, let's say by antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, like mine used to be, and you're able to clear them, well, now you don't have to worry about that anymore. So for me, I'd had blood clots from antiphospholipid antibody syndrome, and it was pretty severe, which is why I took injections for my blood thinners every day. But those antibodies went away and they haven't come back, you know, for almost 18 years. So I don't take blood thinners anymore because I don't have any risk now. Um, so just so you're aware, I don't like when people just stop medicines and hope for the best and they put themselves in danger, but depending on the cause of them, it could help as well. All right, let's see here back to Instagram. All right. Uh, Chinmoy wants to know something indigenous to India in place of spinach. Um, folks I work with in India, usually if they don't use spinach, we'll use cauliflower. Some have found some broccoli in some places, cabbage. So you can also look up Google cruciferous vegetables in India and see what you can find. The internet's very helpful with things like that. Maria Garcia, I, just, I have uveitis and I just started your program. Sylvia introduced me to your program. Good for you. My program works really well for uveitis, uh, especially the kinds that the treatments don't work for medically as well. So I'm very happy for you. And I'm happy that Sylvia is sharing that with people. All right. Let's see here. Yeah, Dora Casadanso, if you want to learn about... Um, the whole idea of the kidney stones and all that and oxalates, go and check out my uh, Instagram or even my YouTube. And um, and that way you can just look up the topic and that will help you. Cause I, I've talked extensively about that stuff. So I don't want to bore everybody who's heard it a million times. All right. And uh, Kristen Wilson, best smoothie for ulcerative colitis flare. If you can tolerate them, then I would, try to stick with the most gentle type of soft leaves like spinach, kale, things that are soft, flax oil, um, so that you're kind of minimizing the fiber uh, even while you are using the food for recovery. All right, let's come back over here. Let's see. All right, Lynn wants to know, I'll be temporarily without a blender grinder for question mark, question mark. I want to keep up my routines, hypernourishing suggestions besides salads, chia puddings for on the go and limited fridge space. Um, well, it depends on why you'll be without it. Cause if it's going to be question mark, question mark amount of time, maybe you should get blender and grinders for wherever you're going. If you're living, if you're going to be off the grid camping or something. Okay. But it says that you have limited fridge space. So it sounds to me like you have a fridge. So if you like the routine of having your smoothies, Maybe you should get a little Nutribullet or something to take with you so you can keep up your smoothies. The good news is that even with limited fridge space, that's not a big deal because vegetables and fruits don't really need much refrigeration. Uh, when we go on big trips, we will buy bags of broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, um, cucumbers, celery, 
fruit and we'll just eat it right out of the bag as we're driving along and enjoying ourselves. They don't need to be refrigerated. So you can, you can get away with uh, a lot of that stuff without needing to refrigerate it. So you just need to plan a bit and you'll be able to do that. If you, uh, you want to go electricity free and grind up your chia or flax, mortar and pestle. <laughs> but it might be worth it for you, like I said, to just get the tools that you need to make your life easier or get rid of the, don't worry about the tools and just eat the foods. And, uh, and that way you'd be able to get it done that way. It's pretty easy to travel and do this. It just takes a little bit of planning. All right. Let's see here. Tipsy counts know if she can use jicama. Sure. Uh, RG, can I hear more about MS? Which plan works? Um, why is meat bad? It sounds like you need to go to my classes or read Goodbye Lupus. And then you'll know about why things work the way they do. Um, I don't want to teach stuff that's literally you can get and easily uh, go over either through my books or my classes or even going on my website and reading some articles. I have details and stuff like that. Um, in terms of the uh, MS, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease Protocol is the way to go. In my book, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease, I have cases in there as well. Um, and so, uh, and there's some testimonials online too. Works very well for MS. All right, let me see. But meat is inflammatory is the short, short answer. <laughs> so it creates damage. All right, let's see. If you want to know like the, the pathways and stuff like that, that's in good I lupus. I, I drew them out. All right, let me see. Try to get one from each place before we shut down and I get back to my appointments private ones. You guys can't come to the next one. All right, let's see. All right. Sandra wants to know what's different in your book if you post the information online. That's a good question. So the Goodbye Lupus book is my personal story and the six steps to healing with supermarket foods. Um, and it's something that people ask for. The reason I published it, people ask for it. They wanted something to give to people and say, here it is. So it has, um, and then later I made my classes where I taught what was in the book for people who prefer to listen to me or watch me teach it. So it's just a really quick and easy resource that has all of the different components and what to do and why. Um, Goodbye Autoimmune Disease book has um, all of, what that has in it is the coaching that I give folks for overcoming the mental blocks and emotional issues involved with recovery. And those came from coaching I actually give in my rapid recovery group. I literally took videos of myself co uh, coaching and turned them into chapters for people. So it has a lot of coaching around self-sabotage and sleep and prioritizing yourself and um, self-care and anxiety, depression, all those things that I help people with so that they can actually just do what's in Goodbye Lupus. And then Goodbye Autoimmune Disease also has dozens and dozens of case studies of different people who've reversed their diseases that I've worked with. So that's what's in them, uh, what's in the books. There is a book that is it's getting closer and closer to publication. That's going to be Rapid Recovery Recipes. Um, you know, recipes that you could use for the Goodbye Lupus Protocol, but they come from people who graduated rapid recovery. So they're tried and true recipes. And we're still dealing with, you know, the design part and putting it all together. So it looks pretty. So hopefully soon, this is probably, I'm, my guess is, it's, you know, going to be by the end of the summer with all the, the, the technical details take the longest, you know. All right, let's see here. Insta. Uh, Machigata, can trauma trigger lupus? Absolutely. And I made a lot of videos about that, that emotional trauma leads people to have high levels of inflammatory markers and that chronic high level of inflammation that's being caused by the emotional stress does make you more susceptible to having autoimmune diseases as well as worse autoimmune diseases and worse, um, worse symptoms, which is why I work with people so much on the emotional side of things. Cause I'm a trauma specialist as well. So worked with people on both sides of those things to help them actually fully recover. Because for some people, it's not just the food. What I found for, for many people who are happy, they love their life, they, they have a great partner or they great friends, they feel good, they just have an illness, they feel emotionally good. But they have an illness, the diet alone very quickly, they're better. They do good by lupus protocol, they're done. Then for everybody else, uh, we have to deal with the traumas and the depression and anxiety. Out of my current group, I think there were two people who said they didn't have trauma. So there's a lot of people who are living with trauma who are also uh, very sick. 
All right. So uh, I did as much as I could, but it is time for me to go. I hope this was helpful to all of you who came today. I'm happy to see the folks who are celebrating all their good, uh, good results they've been having so far. Keep doing it. Keep working. And remember, if something's going wrong, make a plan to fix it. If you're scared of something going wrong, it's just the fear. Notice it and keep going. But don't forget to celebrate what's going right and let yourself feel good about every step you're taking to taking better care of yourself. All right. I will see you next week. Same bat time, same bat channel. Good to see you all.